Good morning, everybody in Toronto and the world. I'm just uh, happy to be here. It's it's a bit of a you know we're we're kind of back to some wintry weather here in Toronto, but and it's quite windy up here on the 20th floor. But I'm very happy to be sharing some some important stuff that um, I work with pretty fundamentally in the office. And I'm just going to wait for a few people to come on. But this is a um, an important topic, which if you if you understand this particular uh, <clears throat> methodology or process, you can probably do a lot of self analysis when you are. Hi, Violetta. Hi, Joelle. Thank you for joining me. I just when people join me, I just want you to share this so more people can join me because this is going to be valuable information for everybody. I want to talk about every one of us, you know, uh, I'm a psychotherapist, I'm in the office, I'm in the office every day as a registered psychotherapist and a holistic psychotherapist, and so it's sort of more of a, of a holistic mind, body, soul approach to things, but every one of us engages in negative patterns, negative behaviors, and those negative behaviors, hello everyone who's joining me, thank you so much, those negative behaviors and patterns can either take over or you can um, be in charge of them. And I'm here to tell you that you don't have to be at the mercy of your negative patterns and your negative behaviors. If you engage in a particular way of uh, analyzing yourself and analyzing those particular behaviors and patterns. And so people come in with all kinds of stuff with a psychotherapist like myself and you know they want to they want to neutralize it and simply talking about things does not change things but deeper analysis hi Sheila deeper analysis does start to shift behavior good morning uh, Malfara Joe um, so I, I want to just talk about you know how you start to think about your own patterns of behavior um, that are uh, troubling, repetitive, constant, and stuff that you do in relationships, stuff that you do in your own being, or with friendships, or in the job, whatever it may be. Um, hi, Carolyn. Hi, Barbara. Um, these are the kinds of things I want people to go, okay, very honestly, I want you to troubleshoot your patterns of behavior. And the first way to troubleshoot it is get a journal out and start writing what your patterns are. And so I'm going to give you three patterns that I observe from case studies from my office so people can, hi Tamara, um, hi Lisa, um, so people can start and to to understand that you can un, you can shift it out. You can absolutely shift it out. So write your own pattern and then I can take you through the process, okay? So the first thing I want to talk about, for example, would be a case study in which somebody is a tremendous, um, comes from a family in which they have to, this one, you know, very, very clear case study of having to basically navigate a very, very perfectionistic mother, as an example. Um, so this person comes in, they say, oh, you know, I'm, I want to neutralize my pattern of um, having temper tantrums all the time. You know, she says, I'm embarrassed by my temper tantrums. I do this in the, in the oddest places. And I find that it's, this is this person saying, I want to master this. I no longer want to have temper tantrums with friends, with my partner, with my, you know, children, with my parents. I, I no longer want to have this temper tantrum. So when we start to dig, we look at this pattern as, not this sort of something that we're going to judge or criticize or shame. She obviously came in with a lot of shame about it. But we're not going to look at it as shaming. We're going to look at it as we're going to make friends with this pattern so that we can understand it. And that's what I invite you to do. Instead of people say to me, I want to cut this out. Instead of cutting it out, really resolve to make friends with the pattern, firstly. Because when you are friendly with your pattern, and I know that's hard, you have a bigger chance of changing your pattern. So the first thing is, is develop a more, uh, an attitude of friendly curiosity about your pattern. So this person is having tantrums. She's yelling and screaming periodically. She has these explosions periodically. And it's so destructive to her, to her relationships, to her work life, all this stuff. So in fact, um, when we start to dig in a little bit more as to what's happening with this person, here's what we start to find out. 
she comes from a background in which she had to navigate a highly critical perfectionistic mother. And that led her to totally mute her own personality in which she had to essentially uh, bob and weave and become this sort of um, almost like a chameleon in which she adapted to everything that she was given. So she became a chameleon essentially when she needed to be uh, when she needed to be uh, outgoing. She was outgoing when she needed to be muted. She was muted. She essentially gave her family and her mother essentially what she needed so that it wouldn't cause waves. So she became she entered into the pattern of the chameleon. And what does Sheila say? So I want to keep in touch with what people are saying. Make friendly curiosity. Yes, friendly curiosity with your patterns. No judgment. No Exactly. Thank you for keeping the notes on this. It's essentially you've got to be friendly with your patterns so that you can be curious enough to understand uh, what it is that is there. Or, you, or the part of you that keeps showing up is going to just shut down and will not reveal to you the nuggets of information you know, that I as a psychotherapist and they're just kind of digging to find out what's in there. So back to my case study. So this is a, you know, a person who essentially learned to adapt to the environment she was brought up in. And what was serving her was to be the chameleon, to no longer have any kind of boundary, any kind of, and, and in through life, what happens is people would know this about her and they would take advantage of her. They would take advantage of her, you know, her time, take advantage of her money, take advantage of her sexuality, take advantage of her, of her friendship. Essentially, she had, she developed a way of being that said, I have no boundaries. So notice that I'm not talking about the negative pattern of chameleon, chameleonizing yourself. I'm talking about the negative pattern of having tantrums, which is really the one that we were looking to eliminate. But upon further discussion and upon further analysis, what we find out is, is that this pattern of being a chameleon muted her so profoundly that periodically she would explode in this rageous manner. And the positive impetus of that tantrum was to reclaim her lost self. Does everyone hear me on this? The tantrum was the gateway to reclaim the lost self that she experienced in her chameleon patterning. I just want to hear, uh, I just want everyone to pipe in or pipe up or give me a little note that says, I, I understand what you're saying. Because I just wish we were talking. <laughs> now, this is a positive impetus with a negative pattern. So, I'm here to say that claiming your lost self is a positive, is a positive motivation, but doing it in the form of a pattern, of a, of a tantrum, is a negative incarnation of this positive information, this positive impetus. So that's what I mean. This is one example of getting in there and finding the message, finding the clue in the negative behavior. If you simply want to cut out the negative behavior, you will not learn from it. If you approach your negative behavior with a curiosity, you will ask the question, what is this all about? The key question, what is this all about? When you start to ask the question, what is this all about? You will start to be able to navigate, you will start to open a part of yourself that is curious and that is friendly, that is going to say, oh, let me look at this tantruming part of me. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Lisa Paul. I've done this myself. Everyone, I, I think every one of us, you know, who might have grown up in situations in which the self has to be muted and the self is squashed, is going to find these ways for the self to break free. And some people find positive ways to do that. And some people find negative ways to do that. And the tantrum is definitely not al allowing the child to grow up, essentially. The child, just the part, there's a part that is always in the child state. <coughs> always in the, in, the, in, in the child state. And so when that child state does not, is not allowed to grow up, or is not, I don't know if allowed or permitted, but is kept in its 
um, in its in its child state, we cannot grow it up so that it can develop into like I think that the tantrum is the child state, but when you grow that up, is someone who is going to be speaking and teaching and you know and 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 communicating, you know, because it's a form of I need to communicate, I need to be heard, I need to be seen, I need to be understood, and then I don't know how to do it because no one ever taught me how to do it, so I'm just going to have a tantrum, but. Let the tantrum not be the thing that dissuades you from understanding that what really is the nugget of gold in there is the person is reclaiming their lost self. Case study one. If you want to give me uh, uh, you know, some ideas, but I have two more ideas that I really want to share with you. Uh, another, another really, really uh, um, pattern that I have seen come into the office is a person comes in and says, oh, I, I don't want to, um, I, I'm constantly wanting space from my partner is the pattern and you know having space from your partner is not a bad thing but in the case of this person who came in saying this is they they literally don't want to they don't want to divorce the partner but they just literally are constantly rejecting the partner and constantly saying i just need my space i just need my time i just need i just need you know i don't want i'm 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 it's completely rejecting the partner and just saying i need to do my own thing and of course that's causing tremendous problems in the relationship obviously and that's another example of cl trying to claim the lost self, but doing it in a way of isolation. And it sometimes shows up as commitment phobia. It sometimes shows up as, you know, overboundaried, overwalled out, super overprotective. So these are negative patterns I find that, that cause people to shut people out, to destroy their relationships to not even allow for relationships and it becomes this pattern of behavior in which there is a real you know necessity to really analyze well what the heck is going on here and it turns out this person never was taught that it was okay to say no or draw boundaries and so the only way that they found that they could you know that they could claim their lost self or be themselves even was to have an overprotection boundary, almost like a, almost like a massive six foot thick wall around them in which they never showed their vulnerability and never showed anything, anything that was, you know, um, that was the real self. It was always overprotection, overprotection, overprotection. So that's an important piece of gold because what we started to do in the case of the tantrum person we taught them something. And in the case of this person, we taught them something. In the case of this person, we taught them boundaries, how to set clear boundaries and not doing it in, in aggressive ways, but teaching good quality, gentle boundary communication. You know, this isn't working for me right now. I really need to take some time for me right now. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Eduardo. Um, you know, this would be, uh, I would really love to be able to um, uh, have Wednesday nights for my yoga class. And and start to gently carve out time for themselves and give themselves permission and work on their self-esteem so that they say, I matter, I'm worth it, and I am, I am, I have a right to take time for myself without fully wholesale rejecting the partner. Hi, Sarah. And in the case of the tantrum person, we started to really teach relaxation exercises, but at the same time, we taught them, I taught them that, you know, you have a right to speak and you have a right to not be the chameleon. And this became an evolution in which once she discovered that, oh, I do, I, I, I have tantrums because I'm just trying to find my lost self, that became like a watershed moment for them. And then that became the journey of the person saying, okay, I, I have, I need to go find my lost self. And we did a lot of really good, um, a lot of really good therapy to have them understand that the lost self was a worthy thing and that they had a right to it. And let's see what you're writing. Reclaiming the lost self, soul through, uh-huh. Oh, I see, you're taking, oh, this is so good. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Sheila. And so the process of the, having the aha moment will lead a person down the road of some personal therapy in which they will start to go, how can I accomplish this positive thing, which is to find my lost self, but in a, in a pot, in, but it but not in a negative way, in a positive way. Not by having a tantrum, not by over-isolating myself, but by, you know, taking time for myself, you know, exploring my vulnerable side, growing up my, my parts of me that are too much ingrained in the child, you know, healing the hurt child, learning how to communicate, 
All of these are ways to reclaim the lost self. And if you don't analyze that, and if you don't find the, the nugget of, of positive gold, uh, the 24 karat gold in the negative behavior, all you're going to do is go about the business of constantly cutting your negative behavior, but you won't learn from it. You'll be like white knuckling life and going, I have to stop that behavior. I have to stop that behavior and just white knuckling, white knuckling, but not understanding it. So there's no friendly curiosity, no friendly curiosity with the pattern. The second you in, 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 enter into an energy of friendly curiosity with your patterns, you can transform them. If you're trying to punish yourself into, I'm never going to, I had a client who, dis, who, who, who disconnected her horn from her car because she was disgusted in herself because all she did was beep, 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 always beeping everybody and having tantrums and having road rage. And she was disgusted with herself. So she just cut off, she cut off her her horn. I said, that's dangerous. Don't do that. You need a horn for protection. But let's find out why you're doing that. And it turns out that she grew up in a situation in which, you know, she, again, she never had a right to speak and never had. So she was always frustrated. And she was always just trying to, you know, overly, overly compensate and take up space constantly. And, and so we, upon analysis of that, she did reconnect her horn and she was able to gently discipline herself to firstly, friendly curiosity of the pattern, but B, to understand that she has a right to beep sometimes, but not to a level where she's trying to control everything. Does that make sense, everyone? This is what I'm trying to, I'm trying to have you understand that your patterns of behavior have information in them. Don't just cut them out. Learn from them. Understand them. And the last little one I want to exp uh, sort of explore is the pattern of jealousy. Who can relate to jealousy? Um, <clears throat> a lot of people have jealous sort of tantrums around their partners, whether their partner is giving them the reason to be jealous or not. And some people, you know, are, uh, <laughs> are, you know, um, have good reason to be jealous. However, in, 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 in this case that I'm talking about, this is a person who was constantly jealous of her partner and there was no reason to, this was a partner that was stand up and there was no reasons to be, to be concerned in any way. Um, it was simply, it was simply, you know, over jealousy, over suspicion, over paranoia. Uh, and so upon looking at this, you know, and she was trying to white knuckle herself. I've got to stop the jealousy. I've got to stop the jealousy. And I'm like, yeah, we got to stop the jealousy, but let's understand the jealousy. And upon further analysis, what we see is this is a person who is, well, not rocket science, deeply insecure. But then why is she deeply insecure? So that's the further negative pattern that we need to look at. Why is this so, but this person so insecure all the time? And we discover that this person does two things. One, does not self care at all. So doesn't take care of their, what kind of nutrition, doesn't take care of their physical well being, doesn't take care of their mental well being, uh, and once again allows other people to dictate their reality. And it's a, it's, it's, it's a pretty universal theme. When we don't take care of ourselves, these patterns will show up. And in her case, it just became, and this was a beautiful woman. This was not a, this was not a, a this was someone who, you know, whatever. My point is, is it could be someone who's very attractive, not as attractive, whatever it may be. If you don't self care, make time for yourself, you're probably going to end up feeling insecure because there's this internal dialogue that says, I'm not really worth taking care of. I'm not worth really, you know, um, spending time on. The person is constantly outward, 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 outward focused. Hi, Emily. Hi, Luke. You know, outward focused. And this person was constantly looking, what's the other person doing? What's the other person thinking? What's the other person experiencing? And she too was like a chameleon. It's like, I need to transform myself into, I need to transform myself into this other person, you know, so that I can, you know, for the example that I want to give with that is she used to love dance. She abandoned dance and all she did was go with what her partner wanted to do, which was hang out in pubs and listen to music. So she started to eat like that and, uh, be up later than she wanted to be. She used to be an early riser. She no longer was. It's like that. So she abandoned herself completely. And when you abandon yourself completely, you stop self-caring. And when you stop self-caring, you get insecure. And when you get insecure, you start feeling jealous. It's kind of like that. I mean, it may be different, slightly different with different people, but it's sort of like that. And then, so we started to look at that and that became, 
What did she start to do? In therapy, every time she came to see me, she was um, to report in around what she was doing to self-care. And my gosh, when she started to self-care, her insecurity started to fall down and her sense of confidence started to come up and her jealousy started to come down. And so the jealousy gave us a clue that she needed to self-care more. Does this make sense, everyone? I encourage everyone to please analyze your negative pattern behavior so that you can transform it by having a friendly curiosity with it. Analyze your own negative pattern behavior. Listen to this video again. Share it, share it, share it, because everyone needs to hear about this. And the more people understand about this, the better it will be. And then all you need to do is um, transform it through getting clearer about what it is that negative pattern is doing for you. It's usually trying to help you find your lost self, trying to help you get a bound, have boundaries, trying to help you self-care more, trying to help you do all that stuff. But it's just showing up in a really negative way. So pull back, pull back, be curious, and transform that negativity into something positive. And you will grow and transform. It'll be magical. It'll be amazing. And it won't be magical because you'll have, you know the process that you got, that you did to get to the magic positive outcome. So once again, uh, go over to my website, visualizationworks.com, and you can pick up uh, my book. Oh, in my first book, I talk, a, I have a really serious, um, lots of um, case studies. Specifically, I have a whole chapter called listening to the hidden messages in negative pattern behavior, listening to the hidden messages in negative pattern behavior. And this here is I mean, I, I take case studies, and of course I disguise my case studies, but um, hi Heidi, nice to see you sweetheart. Um, you know, these case studies that I write about are going to help you understand your own case study and your own experience, and that's what this is all about, is so that you can go about the process of transforming those patterns. And then connecting, rewire your relationship culture is all about all of this information, but in uh, the relationship world whether it be dating, whether it be, I do a premarital checklist. So I look at all kinds of patterns in the, in the, in the, in the premarital. Thanks, Eduardo. I appreciate you saying that, that it's, this is the right time right now for you. So I, I just want you to know that I just want to share this information because it's valuable and sharing is caring and information is worth nothing if you don't share it. So please share this widely because people need to understand how to transform their negative patterns. This is a very very simple process, but it's a very crucial process. So if you're catching me on YouTube, please subscribe. My channel is called Ask Victoria. And of course, join my group. You know, I am all about positivity. Uh, we have the Positive People Army, which Heidi is an amazing leader. And we are, a lot of us are members of that. And we want to keep spreading the positivity. Please join me on another positive group because we're, we're doing, we're doing positivity together, which is, uh, positive self culture relationship culture and family culture and that's what i'm all about so join that group because the discussions are, are going to are, are really starting to be vivid and exciting and we're there to support each other starting to really really support each other so i just want you to be kind to yourself and understand that every negative pattern has a positive message and clue for you to transform yourself is that clear okay blessings Love you and see you tomorrow with another juicy topic. Bye.